Hey guys, welcome back. This is video number 24. In the previous video, I showed you guys how to create a virtual environment and also how to install a package in Python that extends its functionality beyond what you get by default. In that video, I showed you Flask as an example of a package that you can install. And in this video, we're actually gonna use that package to do something really cool. So let's go ahead and dive in. So what I need to do right now is create a virtual environment. Again, like I mentioned in the last video, it's something that I always recommend you do as much as possible, especially when you're gonna be working with packages like we're about to do. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a virtual environment. And I'm running a different distribution of Linux here, so I'll just give you the command for Debian and Ubuntu and compatibles. So I'll go ahead and write it out here. And that's the command we used in the last video to create a virtual environment. Not gonna go over that again here, but we're basically just creating a virtual environment called my project. And we have to clarify Python 3 because Ubuntu and Debian defaults to Python 2. But in my case, since I'm actually on Arch right now, I'm gonna go ahead and remove most of this because Arch defaults to Python 3. So all I need to do is just this right here. So I'll press enter. Virtual environment is created. I know that because it's listed here. Now I need to change directory into the virtual environment directory. Activate the virtual environment. It's activated. It shows my project name right here. And we could also see if I do which Python, it's using the local Python binary. So everything looks good so far. Now that the virtual environment is created, we need to install Flask. That's not something that you get by default with Python. So we need to install that. We use pip to do that. pip install flask. I'll press enter. And yours might be pip3 if you're running Debian or Ubuntu, but uh, we'll go ahead and press enter. And it went ahead and downloaded that. In my case, it says using cached. Yours will probably have different output because I already went through the process of installing Flask here. I didn't clear the cache or anything like that. You'll probably see a bunch of pi uh, progress bars here as it installs the Flask package and its requirements. So I'll clear the screen. And now we actually have everything we need in order to get started. So we can actually create our application right now. So I'll go ahead and create a simple script to get us started. Let's call mine website.py. And nano is looking different here. Again, different distribution. Uh, so don't let that fool you, it's still nano. So I'll go ahead and start the script the same as we always do. All right, so we have user bin environment Python 3, just like we normally do. So I need to go ahead and import Flask. So I'm gonna go ahead and do from Flask import Flask. So you might be wondering why are we using from this is just simply import Flask. We've used import before. For example, we imported random in a previous script, but we only had to use import, so why from? The from keyword allows us to be more selective. We don't need everything but the kitchen sink in all of our programs. We don't need to import the entire module. Sometimes we might benefit from importing a very specific part of the module because we only need a specific component and not the entire thing. From allows us to be more selective. So from here, we're basically just importing the Flask class that we need to use for our program. I'm not going to go over classes in this video. I'll do that in another video, but I just wanted to let you know what from is. It just allows us to be more selective and only import a specific component rather than the entire module and all of its contents. So now that we have the Flask class imported, we can actually create an instance of that class. So we can simply do app. So I'm gonna create an object called app. I'm gonna set that equal to being an instance of the Flask class. So I'll type out Flask with a capital F right there. And I'll do double underscore name, double underscore. Now here we have name in the parentheses. And I'm not gonna go over that into too much detail, but essentially what we're doing is we are naming the actual package itself. We're not actually doing packaging here, so there's no reason for me to go over it just yet. But basically this has to do with if we're going to import this module into another program, we don't wanna have conflicting names 
and we might want the program to run differently based on whether or not it's being imported. So that doesn't really matter for us in this video. So you could go ahead and disregard that. If we do anything in regards to um, more advanced package management, that might be something that we'll go over. But for right now, that's not something that we're worried about. So I'll go ahead and go to another line. And now what I'm gonna do is actually create a decorator. And what it's gonna look like is this. So I'll go ahead and type it out. And a decorator actually decorates a function. I'll explain that in a minute. But what I wanna do right now is actually write the function and then I'll go ahead and let you know exactly what it's doing. So I'll go ahead and call my function message. Indent four spaces. I'm gonna have it return, Python is awesome. All right, so what's going on here? What is a decorator? That's what this line is right here. And what is exactly happening in this part of the code? So here with def message, we've gone over functions before. So you already know what that allows you to do. This function is very simple. All it's doing is returning a string that says Python is awesome. So anytime message is called, it's just simply going to return this right here. Now a decorator basically changes the behavior of a function without actually changing the function itself. I didn't actually go here and clarify a route inside the function down here, this decorator is basically applying route to the function without actually modifying the function. This specific decorator is something with Flask and to understand exactly what it's doing, you would have to read more about Flask that would go above and beyond the scope of this video. But basically the route is something specific to Flask that it uses to know where in the website you are or what part of the website is being served by the underlying code that follows thereafter. We're not gonna go into Flask in too much detail in this video. I'm just gonna show you what it does and why it's awesome and give you a good starting point if it's something you want to learn more about. But here, slash is basically essentially the beginning of the site in much the same way as slash would also be the beginning of the file system in Linux. It's basically just saying this function that's under here is being routed to this location in the site. If you had other links, for example, you might have, if you have like a home link, you might have slash home or, you know, sales section, it might be slash sales or whatever it is. But in this case, we're just going to leave it as the slash. So now what we need to do is add one more line and I'm gonna add app.run in parentheses, just like that. Now, if you remember, app we set up right here. App is created as an instance of the Flask class. And now that we have it, we can actually use its run method, which again is something that we get from importing Flask that basically allows us to run that site. So I'm gonna go ahead and save the file here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and exit out here. We need a market executable as we always do. We have our executable website.py. So what's gonna happen if we run it? Let's go ahead and find out. And we can see that we are actually running a website. And we can see that it's actually running on localhost via port 5000. So if I go back to my web browser here, I'll open a new tab and let's see if it's actually working. So I'll just do localhost and it's at port 5000. I'll press enter. And you can see right here, I apologize that the text is small, but it is actually showing Python is awesome. So I'll go ahead and control C to break out of there. And I will go ahead and bring back my website in the editor. Let's take another look at it. So this is a quick overview. You already know we're importing Flask. And from that, we specifically want the Flask class. We're setting up an object called app. It's an instance of the Flask class itself. We're creating a function here that's just simply returning a string and we're using a decorator to add the route feature to that function. That in Flask terms is basically just the beginning of the site. And then we are running the run method of our app object, which then runs the site. And when we do that, we get the output on the terminal and we were able to access the website 
in the browser just like that. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, guys, but before we do, I just wanted to quickly mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers, and their Cloud Manager dashboard makes it extremely easy to set up your own Linux server in seconds. Whether you like Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is, you can have your very own Linux server running your favorite distribution in a geographic location near you with the latest one just recently introduced in Toronto. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linux server. So go ahead and check that out and let's get right back to the video. Now, there's actually something else we can do here that's pretty cool. We can actually enable debug mode. And this is great if you are just testing the site out before you basically deploy it to production. And you can enable that here by just doing debug equals true. Inside our run right here, we just added that one thing. So I'll go ahead and save it. And let's rerun our site. So here we can see debug mode is on. So if I'm going to go ahead and go to the site, which is already there, I'm just going to refresh it. Refresh it a couple times, actually. And then I'll go back to the terminal. And we can see that every time I visit the site, it's actually showing the request right here in the output. If there were any errors or any problems, we would most likely see those here. So that way we could get a better idea if there's any problems that we need to fix. And I'll go ahead and close that out. And then when we want to deploy this site, we would probably want to remove debug because that would just be a lot of web traffic being logged that otherwise would probably be useless. But when we're testing out a new feature, it's probably something that we would want to do. So I'll go ahead and remove that. So what I'm gonna do right now is rewrite this app, this script, to basically serve an HTML page. This is gonna allow us to actually write any kind of HTML we want and then have Python serve that site or that page to make it available to others. So I will be right back. All right, so I went ahead and changed up the program a bit here. So here on the from line where we were importing Flask, where we imported the class, I want something else as well. So I added a comma here and a space I also want to import the render template feature as well. And that will allow us to basically render an HTML page for our visitors. This line didn't change right here, neither did this one. But for the function, I just renamed it to HTML page with an underscore right there. And then instead of returning a string, it's returning render template. And then I have a file name right here. I'll get to that in a moment. And then we have app.run, and I just put debug equals true again here because I figured it's probably helpful to see that as we are going through this. So I'll go ahead and close out of here. So now we need an actual website or HTML file to serve. So what we need to do first is create a new directory in our current working directory. We're gonna call it templates. This is required. So don't get creative with the name. We actually need that one. And what we can do now is create our file. So if you recall, we called ours site.html, all lowercase. So that's what we need to create here. So I'll just do nano templates, and I'll create that file, site.html. And then I can add some basic HTML here. So I'll go ahead and do that. So, you know, I'll warn you, I am not an HTML programmer by any means, but I, I just whipped up some very simple HTML here. All it is is just a header saying Python is awesome, and then a paragraph basically showing the sentence. And pretty simple, and I'm gonna go ahead and see if this works. So I'll save the file and close out of here. And let's go ahead and run the site and see if it works. So it looks like so far it's working. Debug mode is on, it's running on my local host IP at port 5000. And let's go ahead and switch to the browser and see if it works. So I'll go ahead and refresh the page. Now we can see that the HTML page is here just as I created it. It says Python is awesome and it shows that sentence that I wrote in the HTML file. So it definitely is working. Go ahead and control C to break out of here. And let's bring that back. So just real quick, 
We start the program the same way we always do, in, uh, setting up our environment here. This time we're importing the Flask class, also the render template feature. We create an object called app, and we make it equal to the Flask class. In this program here, we basically created a function called HTML page that simply returns render template with site.html, and this decorator basically maps it to the beginning of the site here. And app.run will run the site, but now that I know that it works, I should probably get rid of debug because if I was going to deploy this for other people to visit, I don't want all that extra traffic or output unless I'm actually testing something. So I know this was a relatively simple example, and it's not really doing much but just showing some very generic HTML, but that wasn't the point. The point is to show you guys that Python is powerful and you could do some really cool things with it. In this case, we basically hosted a single HTML page, nothing too fancy there, but you could extend this to host an entire website on Python if you wanted to do that. But that just shows you the power of Python whether you are hosting a website or wanting to develop your own game, you can do it in Python. And um, I hope that was helpful for you guys. So I'll have the next video in this series uploaded as soon as I get it edited. And once it's done and uploaded, I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out the links in the description below. And there you'll find a link to purchase my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, 2nd Edition. You'll also find a link to my Patreon page, as well as my Amazon store, which includes a listing of Linux-compatible hardware that I've tested personally. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.